hello, everybody. Um, so my name is Richard Pope. I've only got 10 minutes here, so I'm going to, if I, I may all talk a bit quick, but um, I'm going to speak quickly about a project I spent some time on earlier in the year called Habitat. Um, so Habitat is a self-hosted programmable geospatial data store, um, but it's more like, think like a digital assistant, kind of like Google Now or If This Then That. Um, so it's something you host yourself, store your personal data in and kind of run things over um, uh, and it will kind of like send you messages. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about how it works in a minute and then try and do a bit of a demo if there's time. But I kind of before that I wanted to speak about kind of where this idea came from because um, I think it might be applicable to some other projects. Um, so there's five, five kind of itches here I was trying to scratch with building this proof of concept. Um, the first of which is kind of like what we think of as personal data I think is changing to include fairly abstract things like the picture we have in our heads when we think of our neighborhood. Um, you know, this is basically the thing that Google now is building in the background, so it, it knows to tell you when, you, when you're home. But it's actually very abstract, I mean, that's kind of like about 15 minutes from where I live, but there are some bits I don't really go very often, it's just, um, I think these things are gonna start becoming important. Um, similarly, as we get more and more software in more and more places, uh, I think the default UI is moving towards context and push rather than uh, mice and keyboards. So this is the kind of, again the kind of space that Google Now and Facebook can uh, easily do a, a kind of in and uh, ge geospatial feels like the most important context a lot of the time. Um, thirdly, the amount of data you kind of heard this earlier with um, Andrew's talk. Uh, the amount of data that we're all generating is going up and up and up. And even the like, if you look at the, the number of sensors that are in a mobile phone that a web page can access now, it's kind of in, it's exploded in the last couple of years. So things like uh, the battery light status and the ambient light and the kind of geolocation one people probably know about, but we, that associated with device orientation is just like shed loads of data. Um, so where do you want all that, all that data to go and who do you want to be the broker? Do you just want it to be Google? I don't know, it feels like there's a, a lack of alternatives there at the moment. Um, Number four was, um, uh, is everyone familiar with cucumber tests? Was anyone not? not uh, so they are kind of human readable software tests, um, taking the form kind of given when then, it's normally like given when I log in, I should be able to see my account page. But you can potentially repurpose these things uh, as a kind of human language, a, a natural language interface onto data as well. So this was, is a photograph from a hack day that the UK Environment Agency organized and an idea of maybe using cucumber tests to run over environmental data. So you can say, uh, when there's a certain amount of ammonia in the River Avon, then there's a legal breach. So uh, this is a kind of another idea I wanted to explain, which is like, explore, is like, can you reuse these cucumber tests for things other than software testing? Um, and then finally, the other thing is um, that uh, kind of, it's, it feels like now OpenStreetMap's got more complete. The, the value is less in the map and more in the polygons. So uh, you can think of OpenStreetMap as a, a land use, a land use map, a series of land use polygons of the, pretty much the entire planet. Um, and that's really powerful. So this is like an experiment I built uh, late last year, sorry, the year before, of just trying to, um, down, I downloaded a bunch of polygons from OpenStreetMap, put them in a MongoDB database, and then had a web page that checked my current location and just said, where am I at the moment? So you can then ask, you can have an API, which is like, am I in a park? Uh, or am I inside a building? So you take all the outlines of all the buildings in London, and you kind of try and work out whether you're standing inside it. And you could then build other things on top of that, like maybe your website is slightly different when you're inside to outside, it's slightly different in, in the park. So those are the kind of fi five kind of itches I wanted to scratch with building Habitat. Um, but I'm now gonna speak a little bit about wh like what it is, how, how I built it, um, how it works, what it's made of, and then I'll try and do a demo, hopefully if there's time. So Habitat is uh, a data store, it collects location data or it stores location data about uh, an individual. Um, it has a bunch of cucumber tests stored within it. Um, and it also in the future will have a bunch of open data sources in there as well, like the OpenStreetMap polygons. Um, so it's just, a, and on top of that, so that's a server, and on top of it, it's got a basic OAuth implementation and an API. Um, it can then take inputs from a bunch of different places via that OAuth API. Um, and you can also edit the cucumber test via the API. So I've got a couple of example clients that I, I can show you in a minute, but getting data in and editing those scenarios. Um, and then every time data comes in here, these cucumber tests get run over the data and then potentially stuff happens where stuff might be uh, send an email, send an SMS, ping a URL. 
So the cucumber test look a bit like this in this in this instance here. So the most basic example I've got so far is when I'm near a point in space, when I'm within 100 meters of zero, zero, I think I'd be drowning if I was there, but um, then ping this URL. So this is about as far as I actually got, but where I'm kind of heading is a slightly more complicated thing. So uh, linking up with the OpenStreetMap data and saying when I'm in a park and it looks like the weather's gonna rain, then send me an SMS saying it's gonna rain. So this is very similar to kind of if this and that or a kind of self-crafted Google Now. Um, and the idea is to maybe in the future make it a bit more complicated. So this was something I built a couple of years ago uh, to tell me whether to cycle to work or get the underground based on a bunch of conditions. And that's currently running on bespoke code, but it could run on something like this. So you start saying, when I'm at home, where home is something I've defined somewhere, and the weather from some open data looks like snow, similarly the states of the tube, then ping this URL and then make that dial motion. So that's kind of where I'm he heading. Um, what it's made of, so these two example uh, clients you'll see in a minute are built with um, Backbone JS uh, and Foundation CSS. The code editor is a thing called Code Mirror, which is a kind of in-browser code editing thingy. Um, and then the actual server itself is a, a kind of grab bag of technologies. So there's um, the actual server itself is written in Flask with uh, uh, an OAuth lib and Flask uh, RESTful for, for the API. Uh, the data all gets stored in MongoDB because that's kind of the easiest thing to chuck geodata at. It's not particularly good at complex shapes, but it's kind of simple. Um, the Cucumber tests are written, in, uh, get managed by a thing called Behave, which is a Python software testing library. And when new, t new data get, comes into the system, it kind of gets uh, used as a single salary, which is like a queuing mechanism. So kind of stuff goes in there, stuff happens. And, uh, we ping our URL at the other end. So hopefully, I oh, will now try and do a demo. Um, but I might need to quickly rearrange, rearrange my displays. So you can see them. Okay. So the actual server itself is this. So if, you, if you were to install this on a, on a box somewhere, you'd just get this. It didn't do a whole lot um, in terms of interface. It's just got a settings page and it says these are the the clients that are allowed to post data into this or get data out. Uh, and it's got a nice big logout button and it's got some nice pictures of some brutalist architecture for no particular reason other than I quite like it. Um, and then I've got these two clients on here. So, which one should I show you first? So, um, this is the one for editing those cucumber scenarios. It's not actually authorized at the moment. So I'm gonna get pinged off to uh, the Habitat server and I'm gonna say, yes, it's okay. And then it's kind of grabbed a pre-existing uh, test in there, which I'm going and edit. So this is actually somewhere in the UK, this location. So I'm going to go and change that to one that's here. Uh, and save that. Then that's saved. Um, so that's now updated the, ha the Habitat server. Um, and I've then got an example app for reporting location. Now, in reality, this should really be something that's running on uh, a process in the background of my phone. So this is really like a really basic kind of just like post a, a latitude longitude. But you can see it working. So I, when I hit this button in a minute, it's going to send my current latitude longitude to the Habitat server. That's going to go into the queuing system, which is managed by Celery. And then if it matches a bunch of criteria, so if I'm within 100 meters of that point, which hopefully this computer thinks I am, then it will ping a URL. So so we see if it actually works or not. So report location. Browser is going to ask for location. Yeah, hopefully that works. And then if we look in the background here, I'm not sure how easy that is to see. Um, but this is actually the log of the um, of the cucumber test running. So it just ran a minute ago, and it said so it passed because it thinks I am nearby. Um, whereas actually, if I was going to go and change this, so if I made it. Uh, let's assume that's more than 100 meters, probably. And then we go and report it again. The test should fail. I didn't test this earlier, so I'm kind of hoping it. So that's all good. Uh, and then you see this, that task then failed um, because it didn't meet the criteria. Um, whereas when, when it did, when it did pass, it actually would have pinged this URL here, so it kind of um, that kind of 
hopefully explains it at work. Um, I think I'm out of time now, but I, look, this is just to kind of uh, sum up briefly. Um, this is like was just a. This is not kind of production ready software. It's really just me exploring a bunch of ideas. I think there's some merit in. Um, so like the code is online if someone wants to have a play about with it. But I, what I'd really encourage you to do is is to kind of take some of those ideas and see if you can apply them uh, to other projects you're working on. So the idea of kind of like uh, building personal data stores that you can program reusing cucumber tests uh, uh, and, and working out how you how we can start building geospatial tools which are not just about interrogating data but about bringing data to us because uh, if not quite frankly Google now and, uh, and uh, are like will kind of grab this space and there might not be enough room left uh, thank you any, any questions Oh, you saw that one. Um, so I think I didn't try this one, but if you if you take OpenStreetMap's got the outlines of uh, has got uh, the paths for trains. Yeah. 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 I think, like I said, I didn't admit this, but I think I think the answer is you you take the line, you take the train line, and you add sort of 20, 30 meters buffer to it. Uh, you then combine that with am I within that buffer, and also then am I moving? So either using the um, uh, the kind of the accelerometer in a phone, or just sampling and seeing if like you maybe you take three or four measurements, and when you've had three or four measurements within that buffered buffered line, then you say someone's on a train. Um, I, like I said, I didn't try and implement that, but I think there is there's some kind of interesting stuff here. You could kind of guess people's activities based on. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, so partly the point I'm trying to make with this is that actually some of this data is maybe too important to be siphoning off to uh, yeah, a third so party. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, I hadn't. I hadn't really thought about that. But. I think I was maybe going too d too far down the purist route of like making something that's completely <laughs> self-contained. But yeah, build, building this in reality, you would want it to integrate with, you know, uh, other services. So the easy, one of the easiest ways to get your location is actually by the photographs you've taken by a tweet you made. And you just kind of harvest par that into one place. Cool. One more. <laughs> yep. You might need an API on your toilet, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's kind of the idea. Thank you.